This morning on BRN, implementing secure 2.0 provisions. What's relevant now? Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Andy Larson is with the Retirement Learning Center and Michael Biskowski is with Bolton Partners. Michael, Andy, great to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks very much for having us. Appreciate the the opportunity. This is a great topic. It's historic. Secure 2.0, Andy, I want to go back in time just a little bit. Um, Ask you, why was Secure 2.0 so historic, important, and groundbreaking? Well, my take on that is a little different than I think most people have. What, to me, it demonstrated was that this gridlock that Congress uh, is supposed to be so tied down with, in really big and important matters, they're not. The SECURE Acts were huge, and they were overwhelmingly passed on a bipartisan basis. So the, in my mind, the good news, the positive, the historic, the important, the groundbreaking was Congress is concerned about Americans and their retirement. And when you get a practical, well thought out bill or set of bills, it gets passed. Yeah. And, and Michael, I mean, Andy makes a good point. Retirement is kind of the last bastion of bipartisanship, I guess, is what I think they say on the Hill. But I want to get your perspective because you're actually, you're also a practitioner. Uh, Why was Secure 2.0 so groundbreaking in your estimation? I think both sides agree, and to Andy's point, that there are over 50 million Americans that do not have access to a corporate retirement savings plan. And uh, there's always news about individuals not having enough for retirement, potentially suffering from what I've heard running out of money in retirement, or I think the term that's been used has been money death. Um, and that really uh, shocks them. Again, these individuals are voters as well. So really the more uh, the words gotten back to Congress, we really need to do something to cover these individuals. And that really was the impetus for uh, Secure 2.0. Yeah, well said and great perspectives there. Uh, Mike, from from your perspective, when you, when you look at the provisions and there are, I think there's like 92 of them, if I'm not mistaken. You'll correct me, I know. Um, but are there provisions that, that stand out to you that, that are more meaningful, perhaps, than some others? Sure. The ones that really stick out to me are the automatic enrollment for plan sponsors with new 401k plans. From right at that point in, you're getting individuals automatically enrolled in the plan and automatically escalated. So these individuals otherwise would have to make a decision to participate and then pick a contribution rate. Uh, This new provision, again, for new plans already puts them in the plan and puts them onto the path of success. Uh, Another provision which sticks out to me is the age catch up or the catch up provision for those that are age 60 to 63. So as individuals are already in that retirement red zone, the IRS uh, is going to allow individuals to put in extra amounts of catch up than they would be right now. So uh, the Congress and the Department of Labor really see the need for older individuals and to to save and give them one last opportunity to make some above average contributions. Yeah, and Andy, coverage has always been an important part of Secure and Secure 2.0. There are just, I think, 60, 70 million Americans who who don't have access or who didn't have access to a workplace retirement plan. What provisions stand out to you as you, and I know you have traveled the country talking to plan sponsors like Michael, what stands out to you in terms of things that'll move the needle? In my view, the things are going to move the needle are those provisions that are going to help organizations further their their own initiatives, their own objectives. As an example, uh, some organizations, some industries are having a tough time with recruitment. Well, in that situation, things such as student loan matching is ideal. But what's happening is I think plan sponsors are getting better at understanding that the 401k can be a tool to help leverage and be a catalyst to the overall corporate objectives. Conversely, organizations with more low income, lower income uh, employees, the, uh, the pension linked emergency savings account, PLESA, 
coupled with good financial education, I think can be a real plus in recruiting and really culturizing uh, good financial habits. Yeah, and Mike, Andy brings up a really good point. And I think what I took away, the key word there was employers understanding. And I do you, th- do you think in your, and you meet with clients on a regular basis, both of you do, um, are, are employers educated about these provisions and how to implement them? Are they ready to implement what we're talking about this morning? In my opinion, it's a mixed bag. Some are and some aren't. And it's really be, being driven by their advisor or the record keeper. And uh, for example, uh, many or many individuals haven't heard of Secure 2.0 and really don't know what the provisions entail, even at this stage of the game. Um, so for some of our best clients, we've developed a uh, an operational Secure 2.0 checklist to take them through, to understand the mandatory provisions and provisions that they'll have to decide whether they want to add to the plan or not. Um, I also think it's on the record keeper and being able to have these provisions available on their systems. Uh, so I would just say from my experience, some record keepers have been a bit more proactive taking their clients through the Secure 2.0 provisions than others have. And from that standpoint, um, that's how I that's why I say it's a mixed bag. Yeah, and uh, Andy, you want to get your perspective here. Is it a mixed bag from your perspective? Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's all different sized employers. And so they have different level of resources. They have different partners. I think Michael makes some great points. But from your estimation, are employers ready to get going with Secure 2.0? Again, it comes down to the organization. There are little, little organizations that are eager to implement these. They're excited about them. Conversely, you've got some Fortune 500 companies that's bad, present course and speed, no big deal. It, it, it's just a smattering. And what, what I think you know, Mike points out, and I'll just reinforce it, a good advisor or a good consultant is often the catalyst to get the committee up to speed and then supporting the committee to go to the board for support for some of the more macro changes. Yeah, it, Mike, it's a lot more. I, I don't want to toot our horns as if advi- I'm a former advisor, but as an advisor, y- you're kind of right there. You're guiding. You're 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 educating, like w- what Andy was describing. But you're guiding. Um, y- you need things like checklists in order to help prioritize. When you look at some of the features of Secure 2.0, are there features today that clients are implementing? Are they are they saying we're going to do this, this, and this? You know, you look at the the, the box of, a, of 90 plus provisions, that's a lot to go through, but are there certain provisions that they're saying, yes, we're gonna do that? Yes, it seems there are a, a few common threads in the provisions that are being implemented. And for example, the qualified birth and adoption provision is being, ado- uh, and is being implemented. The federal disaster provision is being implemented. Uh, many organizations in the deferred comp and the governmental marketplace have taken advantage of the provision of removing the one month wait to def- start contributing to a, a 457B plan. So those are some of the common ones that we're seeing and, and the domestic abuse seems to be a common provision as well. Uh, one of the ones that has been also been a mixed bag has been the certification, hardship a self-certification. Uh, some organizations will offload that and put it all back on the participant. Others really don't want anything to the participant having to do that. Uh, And that's the one that it really has been stirring the most to be. Yeah. And Andy, I want to close out our, our, this part one of our interview, same question for you. Uh, And I know it's a smattering, it's, it's, it's different perspectives, different resourcing, but it it sounds like a lot of this is around education. You got to get in there. If you're an advisor, talk to your clients and really guide them. There are ways to make these plans better and implementing some of the secure 2.0 changes well, make plans better and actually help you with that recruitment and retention you were talking about. Yeah, then that's an exciting thing because we went through, oh, the last maybe 10 to 15 years, a lot of the plan setup process became very regimented, very formulaic. The simpler it was, the easier and quicker it was, it seemed to make the plan sponsor happier and then the record keeper happier. And I can say that because I'm a recovering record keeper and I know that. Me too, me too. I think Michael is too. Michael, weren't you a record keeper? 
<laughs> I was not. No. Okay. Well, we're reformed record keepers, Andy. I'm sorry. We are, we are recovering record keepers. <laughs> my my point, though, is that it's now getting to the point that plans can, should, and are being examined to align the plan to leverage the organization's objectives. And that's something that it's it's good to see because we've kind of drifted away from that. But the differentiators uh, are the advisors, such as, such as Mike, that are, are very real craftsmen with regard to the to plan and aligning the plan with the organization's objectives. Well, gentlemen, we're going to have to leave it there. That's the end of part one. Part two, we're, tomorrow, we're going to talk about implementing provisions within Secure 2.0. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN. And don't forget to subscribe to our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse, for all the news in one place. Details are at our website. And we're back again tomorrow for part two of my discussion with Andy and Mike. Don't forget to tune in. Until tomorrow, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving and don't forget, roll with the changes.